So, welcome back to my channel, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I am Jomer Adams, and if you're new here in my channel, I am a college instructor and also a graduate school student that creates video tutorial about medical technology, productivity, and everything in between. So, for today's video, I guess you already know what I will be sharing because I am showing it right beside me already, and it is all about my study techniques, and I call it the Bebo Kids formula. Yes, I call it the Bebo Kids formula because for most of the time, most of my classmates, even before in, in college and right now in masters, are calling me Bebo Kid. And for some, they might take it offensively, but for me, I actually don't care anymore because I do what I do. And today, that's what I'm going to share to each and every one of you. But before I'll start, I just want to say that I believe, first and foremost, um, that there is no such thing that is called an absolute formula or an absolute routine for you to be able to make sure that you will ace the exam, that you will top the board exam, that you will be the number one wherever you go and whatever you do. But I strongly believe that you can always study and learn something new so that you can improve yourself and what i will be sharing to you my study techniques is not just an overnight um experiment i didn't learn all these things in one click and afterwards i w woke up like this and knew everything that i know now no actually even my learning journey my learning process is also a an experiment a mix and match of this and that until i end up and i until i found out what works for me and i hope and as i share these things to you you will also find things that are very much interesting that you will also be able to apply it in your studies okay so going back to what i was saying i'm already in grad school right now i'm studying back masters of science and medical technology so at the same time i am a college instructor so there's a lot of things that i really have to study every now and then the things that i will be um discussing in my class but at the same time i still need to learn a lot of things when it comes to my grad school the things that i will be pursuing in my thesis and stuff like that so Having said that now, it's very important for us to have really, really good study techniques. And I call it nga kanina that I call the this formula, the Bebo Kid formula. And if you want to be like a Bebo Kid like me, and if you're my student, I always have the line, okay, a Bebo, um, I will share something that is highly advanced or specialized or advanced for that particular topic so that they can actually be the people kid in the future so that's what i'm doing and for today i am very much excited to share to you my study techniques and for you to be able to remember this very well i call this study techniques natoy yes this i call this study techniques i call this st study techniques Natoy. So maybe you're wondering why Natoy. Bakit ko tinawag na Natoy? Hindi ito si Natoy. Natoy na mahal na mahal ka. Hindi yon, Okay? Hindi ito yon. Yes, hindi ito yon. But I actually made in an acronym Natoy so that you will be able to understand and also remember the things that I will be sharing today. In fact, there are actually only four techniques, study techniques that I will be sharing. And the, the other one is just a bonus one. A bonus thing that I will be sharing to each and every one of you. So let's dig in our topic for today. So NATOI actually stands for, number one, note-taking. So I believe that um, for us to be able to ace an exam, for us to be successful in, every, in things that we do, we have to note we have to take note of a lot of things. Aside from that, A in NATOI stands for active recall. So I will be sharing to you the science behind that later. Aside from that, I'll be also sharing to you time allotment strategy that I do, the organization, and of course, the bonus is the why. The WHY, and not just simply why, but yung bakit mo. Yung dahilan kung bakit ka bumabangon at bakit ka mag-aaral pa ulit mamaya pagkatapos mo ito matutunan. So, I guess you will, we're all ready. So, let's dig in to the first one. The first one is the note-taking. And 
the note taking system that I do is actually called your Cornell note taking system. So this is not a normal or not the usual type of note taking that we do. And by this time, I want to share why am I doing the, the Cornell note taking system as opposed to the traditional note taking. So the traditional note taking procedure that we do is that once we read something, once we see something on the blackboard or in the whiteboard, or we hear something that our professors mentioned during discussion, our tendency is to write it down as exact as as verbatim. Kung baga, saktong sakto kung paano niya sinabi. Ibig kahit yung mga poses, yung mga jokes, yung mga biri, yung mga bira, dun sa pagkakasabi niya. We always want to write it down. But for me, what I do now is the Cornell note-taking. And why Cornell note-taking? So I'll show you later on how does the Cornell note-taking looks like. But when it comes to learning, kasi there are two um very major differentiation when it comes to learning we have the active learning and we have the passive learning so um what we want is actually to do the active learning but what we were taught when we were kids at, at school is actually the passive kind of learning that you just listen to your professor you have your book and that's everything that you need to uh, when it comes to your exams and then you just write everything down you just simply copy whatever is in the, in the whiteboard or being projected in the screen you just copy them word by word letter by letter and then that's it that's your that's already your note but when it comes to Cornell note taking this is one thing that I am very happy that I was able to discover when you are doing Cornell note taking you actually have here specific things in your screen right now the first one is of course the title so i want to always put the title on top and then you have to divide your your notebook into into two columns so one will be for the keywords and the questions and then the other one will be for the quick notes the abbreviation the keynotes and the takeaway from the lecture and on the bottom part you do there your summary so maybe some of you are asking how do you do this is exactly so for me the very exact thing that i do is for most people that know me kailangan ako sa pagsasummarize ng mga ng mga books actually this is um this is a a habit a technique na later on ko na natutunan when i saw one of my friends who actually took the board exam summarize the book every now and then so what i did on my own, I also did summarize my book since then. So I summarized the book and then afterwards, what I do is to do the Cornell note-taking system. So what I do is not just to simply write down or simply copy everything that is on the book or on the screen or whatever the professor is saying. What I usually do, like for example, after reading, after summarizing, what I do is to go through again my notes and then do the Cornell note-taking system. And what I usually do now is to copy as many not actually copy, but to construct as many questions as I can. Yes, Now, I am asking myself what would be the possible question when it comes to this particular topic. Take for example, for spectrophotometry, um, the, the usual things that I will be writing down are what is a spectrophotometry? And then on the side, okay, on the side, so take for example, the keywords are spectrophotometry. But for me, I actually am dwelling more now with questions. So take for example, I have a question. What is a spectrophotometry? So I will write it down on the left column and then I will be answering it on the right part. And then I will um, construct as many questions as I can, as many questions pertaining to that particular topic up until I exhaust all possible questions. Yes, that's what I do. So if one way or another you heard me say inside the class lagi kong sinasabi is that you always have to know to predict the examinations the pre to predict the questions that will be coming out from the exam because whether you like it or not the book that you are reading are all re also the references of your professors so there is actually a chance that the way they construct their questions will be unique because it's their own personality but there is also that certain part that 
that how you craft your questions during note taking will also be the same questions that will be asked during exam and that's very important so that is for cornell note taking okay so that is for cornell note taking and one thing that i want to emphasize here is this is not just a passive copying of notes but this is an active learning style because you ask questions and you try to answer them and to tell you honestly sometimes during during discussion or during your note taking you will not be able to answer everything right away so what i do usually i write i write as many questions as i can and then i look for the answers i look for the answers in the internet in the book reference in the ebooks that i have and then eventually when i already have piled up everything i will be able now to um answer every single thing and actually i'll try to share um my screen to you and actually show you you how it actually how it actually looks like so for everyone who's um watching you can see this is actually my clinical chemistry on my notion so i am using an app called notion so take for example i have here my instrumentation so what i usually do um, take for example i have your carbohydrate i already outlined the topic so classification of carbohydrates so for the classification of carbohydrates i already have a lot of questions for carbohydrate what is the chemical representation of carbohydrates what are carbohydrates what are the function of carbohydrates and what are the classification of carbohydrates so roughly this is how it looks like so if you're gonna go into other notes that i have take for example for atomic absorption spectrophotometry so i have questions here what is the spectro aas then when i click it the answer will be shown and then ayan so as many questions as i can i write it down so what i try to do is actually um try to and try to write down many as many questions as i can and then eventually what I will do next is to write the questions and then search for search for the answers and that will be now my my notes for that particular topic. So this is not just a simple note taking um, note taking system. It's actually um, I believe it's a very good um, way on how to train our minds, our brains to think because we're not just manufacturing answers but also questions that could possibly appear in your exam so that is for my letter n in natoy n is note taking and i do the cornell note taking on the side alongside with my summary and of course the letter a there is active recall yes active recall and if you can see when we are talking about active recall we do talk about flashcards so during my time when i was in college so around 2011 to 2015 mano mano yung paggawa ng flashcards because most of us don't have smartphones at the time so mano mano kami gumagawa ng flashcards so we have index card and then we write something in the front and then the answer will be at the back so that's usually how it looks like um we actually ma we manually make our own flashcards but right now if you search your uh, your google store if you search your apple store there are actually a vast array of flashcard applications that you can use and as for me um as for me what i use as flashcards are actually this the same thing that i was able to show you a while back my notion so as you can see there is actually a very good um a very good feature of this this application notion it actually have your toggle list so in your toggle list actually you have here okay let me show this first to you okay so in your in in your list i actually have here a an arrow so take for example um i want to study your atomic absorption spectrophotometry so i will click on this what is aas and then i will try to answer it on my own okay i will first try to answer it on my own so what is the reason behind that why would i want to answer it on my own and this is the science behind active recall the more pa brain energy or brain power you need for you to be able to retrieve a particular information or a particular data stored in your brain the better connection it is within your brain so in short must 
hinuhukay mo yung utak mo, yung, yung isipan mo, yung memory mo to gather and retrieve those information, the better. Because the retention will be much better. So take for example, I have here your AAS. And I will be asking myself, what is AAS? So in the case na, take for example, I don't know the answer, I can simply look for it. So AAS is used to measure concentrations by detecting the absorption of electromagnetic radiation by atoms rather than your um rather than by your molecules so how the so let's try this question so i am um i am actually uh i am actually ambushing myself now so let's try one question that's in here so that you can see how i do the active recall so but your active recall can be in the form of your flashcard, whether a, a physical flashcard or a Quizlet. I know a lot of you now are using Quizlet in your flashcard. There are actually a lot of other applications that you can use. But for me, I actually do my best to, to, to use my notion. So how does AAS measure concentration? So um, what I remember, so take for example, I'm trying to recall right now. How does your atomic absorption spectrophotometry measure concentration? It measures concentration because the amount of energy or light absorbed by your atom is directly proportional to your concentration. So hopefully I'm correct. Ayan. So the light of atom, okay, absorbed by the atom. So what are the usual elements measured by AAS? I actually remember that there are seven um seven seven elements that are being measured using your aas so that is actually your aluminum your lithium your zinc your manganese your lead your copper and then i am missing one your your lead and then okay and then so take for example i i forgot that so you also have your zinc and your zinc so aluminum copper lead magnesium lithium and zinc so that is how i how i do it so like for example the more energy that you have to to use in retrieving those informations the better so that is how active recall works for me so in short you don't just study your lesson by merely reading it by merely highlighting and underlining it but of course reading it summarizing it and then trying your best to really um, challenge your brain to retrieve those informations okay so let's try another one for the basic components of your aas so for the basic components of your aas as far as i remember i have two parts here the general um configuration or the general setup and of course the, the components and if i'm going to um list down the components we have your light source we have your beam chopper we also have your um, your your beam chopper and then your nebulizer or your atomizer. We also have your flame or your graphite furnace if it is flameless. And then you have your monochromator and then your photo detector in the form of your photomultiplier tube. And of course, your readout device. And that is seven. If And uh, if I'm going to check it, it's actually in that form. So I hope I was able to set that example already. So having mentioned that that is how i do my active recall i do active recall by challenging my brain to retrieve information as much as possible so that is for my letter a n is for note taking the Cornell note taking system and a is for active recall that is how i actively retrieve and recall information that has been embedded inside my brain so what is the next one so what would be the next one that is now your after n your note taking your a your active recall so yeah this is an example of my my other note taking and uh, note taking um note taking or no my active recall this is your fluorometry yeah and this is your fluorometry and this is how it looks like so i have the questions there so what is luminescence what are the three forms of luminescence you have your 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 fluorescence phosphorescence and your chemiluminescence and then what is fluorometry so on and so forth so that is how my active recall look like and of course the other one that i was mentioning is all about your time allotment yes your 
time allotment. And when it comes to time allotment, I do the Pomodoro technique. But disclaimer lang po, mga kapatid, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a certified Pomodoro master. Yes, there is such a thing as certified Pomodoro uh, master. So, your Pomodoro is actually an Italian word which means tomato. So, tomato, bakit po tomato? So, it is actually tomato because the, um, the one who discovered it is Francesco Cirillo, which is an Italian. And during that time, he actually made a timer out of... Uh, he actually made a, a timer that is in the shape of tomato. So, how does the Pomodoro technique works? So, let me share to you how it works. So, first one is for you to identify the particular task that you want to accomplish first. So, take for example, for me, I actually list down, um, for me, I actually list down my to-do list first thing in the morning. Or sometimes, if I actually want to force myself to wake up early, I actually do my my to-do list, my checklist before I go to sleep so that I will remember everything that I need to finish the next day. So, for the Pomodoro technique, what you need to do is to first select the first task that you want to be accomplished within that particular period of time. And then what you need to do is to set the Pomodoro. We call the Pomodoro as your timer. So the timer usually is 25 minutes. Yes, only 25 minutes. So I will be setting my time for 25 minutes. And usually, I don't buy a Pomodoro timer already, as similar to what you're seeing, or I do not subscribe or do not um use any other um app sometimes i only use my phone and i only use my phone 25 minutes but now i'm actually using a an application in my laptop which is actually called your focus focus city it's actually similar to the forest that is in your phone so what i do is actually to set my target timer into to 25 minutes and then what i do next is actually to what to block some applications within my laptop so i can block facebook other websites that might um tempt me to uh visit every for the meantime that i am doing my pomodoro so the key here when you are doing your pomodoro is to actually focus yourself to commit yourself to that particular task for the entire 25 minutes yes for the entire 25 minutes so you have to commit yourself for the entire 25 minutes until the Pomodoro rings, until your timer rings. So, ako, what I do is actually to really set myself and discipline myself to really work and focus for 25 minutes. For 25 minutes, no phone, no other tasks. So, take for example, I remember along the way, habang nag uh, may ginagawa akong task and I am on my first cycle of Pomodoro. And then I remember... A particular task that I need to do next. What I usually do is to have my notepad with me and then I will just write down. So this is actually an example. So um, this morning I was doing my devotion and then um, that is actually I am cutting it into 25 every 25 minutes and then alongside I was um, I am remembering things that needs to be done for today, what I do is actually to write it down. So you can see the things that I actually wrote down here. And afterwards, um, after the Pomodoro rings, what I need to do now is of course, what? To take a break. So usually I take a short break. So usually around five minutes break lang. So um, five minutes breaks. And then as you can see here, every four Pomodoro or every four cycles, you have to take longer break. So 25 minutes, roughly that is around, so if 25 minutes and then five minutes, um, five minutes break interval. So four cycles is actually two hours already. So there are actually a, still a lot of nitty gritty details when it comes to Pomodoro technique, but I'm, I actually just adopted it. Um, not the entire, um, not the nitty gritty stuff that comes along with it, but your, in, in a nutshell, that is already your Pomodoro technique. What I do, again, to recap, 25 minutes, I commit myself. Yes. Diba? 25 minutes po nating i-commit yung sarili natin, hindi po sa relasyon. No, no, no. 
but to that particular task that you want to do. So usually, I allow 25 minutes to finish something and then take five a, sh- a five minute short break and then return back to my to the second cycle and then break five minutes and then 25 minute cycle and then break. So usually, um, for a particular task, I actually um, depend kasi sa, sa ginagawa mo. So sometimes three cycles, three, four cycles for you to be able to do that. So if you want to learn more about Pomodoro Technique, you can actually search more on the internet or maybe I'll be making one video soon about the different um, digesting or dissecting each and every techniques that I am sharing to you today. So that is for my Pomodoro Technique, the time allotment, I do the Pomodoro Technique. So, yun din, siguro I, I'm trying to psych up my mind kasi kung iisipin ninyo, di ba, kung iisipin ninyo, kapag inisip mo agad that I need to study for two hours, sometimes your mind gets overwhelmed, your body gets overwhelmed, na, gosh, that's too long. So, two hours is too long for me to sit down and plainly study. But if you try to com- to divide it into Pomodoro, ta- into Pomodoro cycles, 20 25 minutes, 25 minutes, 25 minutes, 25 minutes. You're actually are pretty much able to um, conquer it easier. And aside from that, you are also giving your time, ta- your brain time to process, to consolidate, and integrate everything that is in your mind. And speaking of integrate, that leads me now to the fourth one. So the first one is no taking. The second one is active recall. Third one is time allotment. And the fourth one is all about organization. Yes, it's all about organization. So what do I mean when it comes to organization? I do concept map, I do outline, and I do integration. So sometimes if you see me studying, you actually would be... um, Siguro, baka isipin nyo ang weird ko masyado when I'm studying because sometimes I tend to to shuffle my hair this way. So, nagugulo talaga siya ng todo, bad hair day siya. But usually, what I actually do is to in, in, in integrate every single thing that I know for that particular topic and everything related to it. So, that's how I do it. So, when you say concept map, kasi it's like making a map within your mind, whether mental or better if you do your your physical concept map whereby what i do is to put the main idea in the center and then everything that is connected to it i do it so take for example for atherosclerosis so when you talk about atherosclerosis you talk about the the lipid of the the lipid of the individual so we talk about clinical chemistry if you talk about atherosclerosis you also have to have a background about the anatomy of the heart the myocardium the different layers of your blood vessel so that is anatomy and at the same time that you know that atherosclerosis also involves your immune system because when your mast cell detect the oxidized ldl along the way they will start to signal the entire immune system so that's one um, migrating your monocyte so immunology you also have platelets eventually rushing into that and being activated both causing your thrombosis which is in hematology and, and and many many other topics alongside so if i'm gonna um talk about your atherosclerosis i talk about clinical chemistry anatomy immunology hematology and for some i can even talk about um, histopathology, histopathologic um, appearances of your heart after a myocardial infarction. So you see, once you study something, it's not just a part. It's not just a rigid system. That pag atherosclerosis, eto lang siya. No, you have to integrate what you know from other subjects into that. So that is how I. I process my my information as well. So I organize it through outlines, through integration and concept map. And aside from that, it's also very um true then that sometimes you have to make use of those information in real life. So take for example, hindi ko makalimutan yung muscle um on my extremities which is your gastrocnemius because I usually use it every day. So I would always um uh, make fun of myself, sabi, sasabihin ko, ang laki-laki ng gastrocnemius ko. And eventually, I never forgot that anymore. So, there's a lot of concepts in 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 medical technology that 
truly is very hard to remember but once you take a grasp of that uh, of that information and organize it and integrate it into your learning into your daily your in your daily um in your daily system it will be an easier time for you so that is for, um everything when it comes to organization so let me show to you an example so an example of your organization will actually be your concept map so take for example that the main thing that is being talked about here is your cell biology and it actually branched out into other many many branches from mitosis meiosis from apoptosis from imaging technique from the organelle from energy production protein lipids so on and so forth so that is how your concept map looks like me i am a i have a simpler version of my 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 concept map this one is an example of an outline so right now i'm studying my advanced research for my masters so i have all the effects of your expectation and i wrote them down everything and then eventually i also have here what is placebo effect the mechanism of placebo effect effect the um pl the placebo in my own words because um eventually i will be taking my exam and, and, and it's an essay and i want to craft my essay according to my own words basing on the things that i already have read along the way so that is how i do my organization so as you can see sabi ko nga kanina, this is the bibo kids formula and these things might work for you or might not work for you but there is no actually harm in trying because the first time when i actually looked um was introduced to these things i was the usual common student that actually just you know write down things and then try to remember try to um trust my recollection about things but then when you go to your clinical years and ayan pala ha, this is not just applicable to medical technology students this is applicable to every single students who are studying and if you want to really get good grades really improve your grades and maybe for you right now yung system or your yung technique na ginagawa mo is no longer working for you maybe it's time to try other else or it's time it's time now to really integrate other techniques and system into your learning process in your learning journey and if actually mag, mag improve your grades or mag improve yung mga performances ninyo please let me do know comment it down below sa ating comment section and actually this is the perfect time because i am filming this video um during the ecq period and there is nothing to do okay? there is nothing to do so you can try this at home you can now practice even before the new school set, school year starts para pag, pagdating mo di ba you're no longer just a quiet kid on the side but you will be a bibo kid that will be performing well inside your class so that is the four techniques that i will i am able to share the first one again is note taking active recall time allotment in the form of pomodoro technique fourth one is organization making concept maps making an outline and making your own integrations within your mind so i'll go now to the very last part and definitely not the list so i am actually gonna share to you the why the power of why your motivation and your purpose so for most of you yes procrastination maybe is one enemy that is so hard to conquer even i myself have times when i really just want to procrastinate just lie in my bed and do nothing the entire day but then alongside with all those four sometimes even if you have the the if you already have mastered the cornell note taking system you do your active recall you do your pomodoro techniques and sometimes you also do your your organization your concept maps and outlines but there will still be times whereby you just feel like i don't feel like studying right now i don't feel like doing things right now but then i just want to remind you of your why your w h y why did you first started in the first place why am i doing this again so why did i um dream of this and why did i set this as my goal take for example when i was in third year medical technology that was the first clinical year and men 
the struggle is real really the struggle is real and then most of the time after a quiz if i fail a quiz i will usually say to myself baka hindi to para sa akin baka hindi talaga ako para dito and those negative thoughts kept uh, um kept on coming but then i always have to remind myself as well of my why my purpose which is my motivation on why am i doing this of course aside for my family aside for myself i have actually revised a saying so diba may kasabihan tayo na do your best and god will do the rest so that is actually one thing that i uh, believe in when i was in high school elementary but when i was in college i actually tried to revise that and it goes like this do your best and offer it to god and that is one of my why that is one of the reason one of the purpose why am i doing everything as perfect as possible as good as possible as excellent as possible as bibo as possible because i believe that everything i do is like my offering my sacrifice to the lord and whatever i do diba whatever i do i will offer it to him and all i want to offer is the best that i can the best that i can be so i hope that is also um um through with you na sana matutunan nyo din hanapin at i-define araw-araw yung WHY mo. Yes, I mean it araw-araw. Kasi, di ba, there are times when you wake up and you don't wanna go to school anymore kasi baka bumagsak lang ulit ako sa isang quiz, bumagsak lang ulit ako sa exam. exam. But no, you always have to remember your why. You always have to remember why you started in the first place. And for me, My reason, my motivation, my purpose was, of course, for my family. I also want to um, um, do this for myself. But above all, I want to do it as my offering for my Lord, for my God. And I hope that's also the same thing with you. And this is actually um, one thing na hindi naman ituturo sa atin sa school. Eh, diba? it, pagdating mo sa school, it's just your book. It's all about academics. But now, I hope... Na, that I was able to help you, hopefully, with all these things in finding your why. And right now, maybe it's time for you to reflect on this one first. Kasi baka tinatamad ka na ngayon, kaya ka nasa YouTube. Or baka kaya nandito ka kasi wala na, di ba? Gusto mo nang sukuan lahat. But I'm here to remind you that you have to look for your why. You have to look for your motivation. You have to fight for your motivation. And you have to realize the power of why in your life. And I just want, before I end, I just want to quote Jim Quick, which is a brain coach. Lagi niyang sinasabi, di ba? Lagi niyang sinasabi, there are three H when it comes to learning your head, your heart, and your hands. And sometimes, if one thing is um, one thing is not there, hindi makukompleto yung sis hindi makukompleto makukompleto yung circuit so for you to be able to help your brain transform that into a long term memory your information should always be backed up with emotion have you experienced that na let me ask you this one question who is your favorite teacher when you were in in high school is in it you're able to remember it immediately why Because there is an emotion attached to that. There's an emotion of joy, excitement, kasi matututo ka ulit. O, oh, ito pa, ito pa, ito pa. Remember the name of your ex. Yung ex-boyfriend mo, yung ex-girlfriend mo. Oo, oh, oh, siya. O, oh, di ba? Based, based matandaan. Why? Because there is emotion attached to that. And the same thing with your, um, the same thing with everything that you are studying. And maybe you're asking, Sir naman, di ba? Paano ko naman bibigyan ng emotion yung yung cerebellum, yung cerebrum, yung med, yung yung medulla, yung 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 mga zygomaticus arc, 'di ba? Yung the zygomatic process to the te- ganun ganyan, 'di ba? This is the zygomatic arc of the temporal bone, 'di ba? Mga ganun nating stuff, 'di ba? But how are you go- gonna include emotions there? And the answer is to find your why. The power of your why. And I hope that I was able to help you. So that is my 
Bebo Kid. Ayan, the Bebo Kid formula. And if you want to see more videos like this, so please hit the comment section and do suggest whatever or what other else um, na mga topics or videos that you want me to make. So before I leave, okay, pakakatandaan po ulit natin, Natoy, yes, si Natoy, oo, si Natoy na mahal, na mahal ka. Okay, so no taking, active recall, time allotment, your organization, and of course, your wife. The power is your wife. And before I leave, I just want to um, impart to you this quote that has been um, my motivation each and every day. Drive today, strive today, and drive tomorrow. So again, I just want to thank each and every one of you for um, keeping up with me in this video. So this is Jomer Adams one again, once again. So if you actually did enjoy um, this video, I hope you like this video. You share it to your classmates. This is no longer just for medical technologists. This is for everyone who's studying. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. So hit the like button share this video and subscribe and also click the notification bell for you to be able to not be notified for the latest video that i will be uploading so again thank you so much this has been jomer adams and that are those are my study techniques the people kid formula so, Thank you.